Good morning, my name's Keith Maynard and I'm here in Hoglands Park in Southampton and it's Christmas morning, it's just gone 11 o'clock. I'm sure many of you back at home will be uh, maybe on the way back from church or possibly around the tree opening presents or basting that turkey and getting ready to give it a good stuffing. Whereas uh, one man this Christmas has decided to do something a bit different. He's decided to give something back to the local community and that man is James Hilling. James himself was homeless four years ago. Now he's turned his life around. And this Christmas, he's giving back to the 700 or so rough sleepers in Southampton. He's giving them a chance to have a little bit of Christmas cheer. Well, I'm here with James, the man who has uh, made a difference uh, to some of the rough sleepers around Southampton this Christmas. James, hi there. Thanks very much for joining us. Hi. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, I've got to say, James, I mean, blimey, you're, you're, you're seven foot tall, is this right? That's right, yeah. And you are, uh, in many ways, you're known around Southampton as being the, the gentle giant, the man, with the, the man with the great heart, and you've certainly shown that again this Christmas. You've got quite an incredible story. I believe that uh, it's true in saying that you yourself were homeless four years ago, is that right? Uh, yeah, a little bit over four years ago. So what, what happened to turn things around for you? The support network that's uh, available to us, you know, or to people, you know, through... Uh, uh, through the council and the outreach programmes, but um, I, I think you also have to have a lot of drive and self-belief. Can I ask how you how you ended up on the street? I used to be uh, I used to be a bodyguard to some pretty high-profile um, music guys, and um, I got stabbed uh, in the head, and uh, I lost uh, I lost my job and I uh, lost all my my savings, and uh, you know it was uh, a pretty sort of depressing time ended up, uh, you know, not having anything or anywhere to go. I mean, there's a lot of organisations out there like Crisis, the Salvation Army, that do a lot of good work. And I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that particularly recently a lot of social uh, welfare reforms are having a, quite a negative impact. I know that Crisis say that, is it up to 43%, it's been a 43% increase in homelessness yeah. this year. I mean, do you have any opinions or any thoughts on that? Um, I, I, to be honest with you, it's, uh, it's difficult. It's really difficult to not speak out of turn, but... You know the uh, the government really, you know, are to blame massively. You know for uh, the rise, you know, in uh, in uh, homelessness. You know, it, it, when budgets are cut, you know, these are the uh, kind of initiatives that get cut first. You know, because it, it it doesn't matter to them. They don't they don't care. You know, it doesn't directly affect them. These are the kind of programs that you know, need the support and the money, you know, to regenerate, you know. Were you given a lot of support with this when you decided that you wanted to give up your own Christmas? And I'm guessing that, and I will correct me if I'm wrong, this is your money that you put into this? Uh, it's not my money. I mean, I have I have put some money into it, but um, I, I, um, I uh, sort of approached, um, you know, some local businesses, um, and some nationals, you know, wrote to them and explained how uh, Southampton City Council have run out of money, and uh, this was the, uh, the the initiative that was going to be cut, you know, because this is the first year for six years that uh, they've not done anything, you know. And when so I they normally do it. They normally do this, yeah, but yeah, the, the money's been cut because of the, the reforms. Yeah, yeah, they normally do it in Central Hall, and they have like a, a soup kitchen, you know, where they just give soup. When they said that they weren't going to do it, I thought, well, you know, it's. Uh, someone's got to do something, you know. So um, I wrote to uh, Golden Wonder because I, I, I wanted to give them something different, you know, instead of just soup. So uh, I wrote to uh, Golden Wonder and uh, explained, you know, what I was trying to achieve. And, you know, they were very good in the end. Go and help yourself. Yeah, yeah help yourself. Yeah. So that's uh, someone now coming through, as you can see. One of the uh, 700 rough sleepers here in Southampton who's getting a chance to get something warm. So you mentioned Golden Wonder. You've, you've got their soup and coffee and tea yeah, and also... Well, we've got, their, uh, we've got their pot noodles. We've got like 300 uh, units um, to give away. Uh, but also um, 
wrote and spoke to local business, local businessmen, you know, um, and, you know, like Pit Stop News, uh, you know, a very sort of uh, successful uh, sandwich shop, you know, who gave me all their, uh, the cups and the coffee and the tea and the, the mince pies. And obviously we needed power. So I'm here with uh, one of the volunteers that James has managed to gather together for this uh, very special uh, Christmas occasion. I'm here with Dan. Hi, Dan. Hello. How are you doing? Very well indeed, yeah. And uh, thank you so much for giving up your time on, on Christmas morning. Are you having, a, having a, a productive morning so far? Yes, yeah, it's been good. Good to help some people out on Christmas Day. Do you know, are you friends with James? Is that how you heard about this? Or did yeah, you... yeah, I've known James for quite a while. I heard he was doing this and I thought I'd give him a hand. I'm not really a Christmassy person myself, but it's nice to give something back to people who haven't got much. So I went to uh, HSS Hire, they gave me the generator, the tier. So basically you've galvanised local support and, and, and also national companies to, to, to achieve this, but also, more importantly, uh, Christmas time, which is a, traditionally a family time, particularly in the UK and around the world, you've given up your own time. And that's something which is the greatest gift in today's society, time, because people don't have time for this, do they? People yeah. don't have time for each other yeah, and we don't have time for I, I some of these issues. Um, I think that, that point in itself is... Uh, it, I don't think that's right. You know, there are there are lots of generous people. You know, there are lots of generous people in today's society, but they don't know how to um, they don't know how to exploit their generosity. You know, and so how how do you think people well, can do that? How how can we I, encourage I, people to be more generous with their time, or or direct them so they know how to direct their energies? Uh, that design's well, there, but what can they do? I, I use social networking, you know, massively, and uh, you know, I've been pushing this uh, this event on uh, Facebook and Twitter and you know everything else. And you know, there are people who you know have have uh, you know been touched by you know what I and you know the team are uh, are, are trying to achieve today, and you know have. Uh, offered money and support and all the people that you can see here and the ones that were here earlier you know they're here to support you know the courts you know and they're not here for me they're here for uh you know the people of southampton you know who have nothing you know and yeah it's uh it's tough you know so it's, uh, it's a it's a sad it's a sad situation that um you know the the, the council they just they don't care you know they don't. What can, what, 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 if you had a message to anyone that's watching from the council or from people that have the power to really make a change, what would that message be? Uh, well, the message would be, uh, you know, that we need to uh, direct our uh, attention. Help yourself, guys. There's lots of stuff there. Help yourself. Um, you know, we need to, uh, you know, we, we need to make, make, um, make people aware of uh, the situation that is here on our doorstep, you know. You know, we, the, 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 there is so many obvious um, people, you know, who have nothing, you know, and, you know, what is there, what, what is there for, what, you know, what is in place for these people, you know, and, uh, you know, over there, you know, the central, the central hall is their sort of answer, but it's, it's great for the volunteers that, that uh, go and, and, and do that, but they're there you know, maybe once, once a week, you know, we need to, we need to make uh, the government sit up and take notice of what is, you know, a massive problem, you know. James, you know, certainly from my point of view, you've inspired me that you give up your time and that you've galvanised people to do this. So thank you very much. And uh, as we can see in, in behind us now, people are coming in. It's been raining all morning and the weather's had a, a really damp start across the country. Uh, and I suppose there are people all over the southwest who are going to be homeless this Christmas because of the weather. Um, but James and his team are doing something and making a difference this Christmas uh, for the people behind us and the people in Southampton. So, James, thank you very much. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Brilliant. So I'm here with Dawn. Dawn's come along to uh, get a cup of coffee and uh, maybe try and warm up. Hi, Dawn. Thank you Hello. very much for chatting Hello. to us. Hello. How are you? All right? I'm very well. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Now, Dawn, you uh, currently are you are you currently sleeping rough around Southampton? What's yeah, your story? In the car park, East Street car park. East Street car park. Yeah. Okay. How long how long have you been there for? Uh, on and off for nearly three weeks now. Uh, do you mind me asking? Is this is this three weeks since you, you, you've been sleeping rough, or just no, in that I've area? Been sleeping rough previously, but in that particular area. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there is it a, a, a you know kind of a place where you can get a bit of warmth and a bit of security, or is it still? 
It's been okay, but I mean, it's very drafty because there's no insula there's no glass. I know it sounds a stupid thing to say. There's so when the wind blows, it goes straight through the bars, and it can it can be a bit cold there. Can I ask how you how you ended up o on the streets? Yeah, a uh, combination, bad choices, uh, drink, drugs, bad relationships, just bad life choices, really. Yeah. And how long now have you been been sleeping rough around Southampton for? Uh, about three weeks in Southampton, but I was sleeping rough in Winchester previously for a couple of months in Winchester before that. But I'm originally from the Midlands. Do you do you think that more could be done to help people uh, such as yourself in, in your situation, or do you feel that there is a lot of support out there from the government and from people who give up their own time? Uh, I think a lot of uh, people, just most people I've met, seem to do it off their own bat, you know, without any, like, you know, a reward apart from appreciation from people like myself. But I think there could be a lot more done and a lot more places and also places for different people with different age groups and different problems because there's some people who are frightened to go in hostels at my age and older and they'd rather be outside. Because they're frightened of some of the other people that yeah, are in there. Actually, in the hostels and I've actually encountered that myself in my life. And that's awful. I know people a lot older than me who won't go in because they feel some more secure sleeping outside because of the way some of the hostels are run. So I think there should be hostels for different age groups with different problems and different needs. And I think they tend to clump people all together. So I think that, sh that should be looked into, you know. You know. Absolutely. Now, um, you yourself... How did you hear about this? Because obviously, this, I don't know if you're aware, but this is the first year that, that uh, Southampton Council haven't been able to do something themselves because there have been cuts yeah. to the money. Mm -hmm. So James has organised this and, 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 and galvanised support uh -huh. locally to put this on. How did you hear about it? Uh, somebody actually took the time to uh, shout up to see if anybody was in the um, E Street car park. I didn't know about it. Uh, one of the all volunteers uh, just shouted up if anybody was there. And I just put my head round and she told me about, you know, I could get hot uh, food and a hot drink. You know, that's how word of mouth, you know, so. What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, effect do you think little acts like this have um, for people such as yourself? Do, does it still give you hope? Yeah, yeah, well, it, it does actually, yeah. I mean, I'm not feeling that we're all probably feeling a bit down at the minute because the time of year and everything, but it, it does, it does, make a, it does make a difference actually, yeah. Dawn, thank you very much for chatting to us. I really appreciate it, and, and I wish you all the very best for the future. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. Thank you very much for chatting to us. You're welcome. Uh, tell me, Kaylee, how did you get involved with uh, with this project today? Actually, I, I only found out on Christmas Eve. Steve, who's holding the camera, um, sent an email round at work and told us it was going on. So we decided to come and offer a couple of hours, try and feed some people. Okay. So traditionally for you, like most people around the United Kingdom and indeed the world, it's, it's a family time. Um, so for you to give up this time is it, really, really special. It, has it opened your eyes to the issue around Southampton? Were you aware that there was such a, an issue with people sleeping rough? Um, I did know it went on and I support Food Bank, so um, I'm aware of it. But I've never really, I mean, I went and spoke to Dawn, who you interviewed, and I called up a stairwell in a car park and she shouted down that she was hungry. I think it's 2012 probably shouldn't be going to find people in car parks on Christmas Day. No, and, and from what she's saying, she's come across from Winchester. Um, you know, she's had issues with drugs and alcohol. Yeah. She, she looks like a lady who who doesn't, from what she said, chatting to her, she doesn't ever see herself getting off the streets. No. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrible. She feel, I think she feels quite hopeless at the moment, and she said she needs to get, get her confidence back up and feel a bit more positive before she can move forward. But um, if I was sleeping in a stairwell on Christmas Day, I'd probably find it hard to cheer up as well. So, But at least you've got people like James that will come and give their time, and, and at least she has been fed today and someone to talk to, and we're sharing the cups of tea around, so... It's better than nothing. Well, thank you on behalf of everyone for, for giving up your own time and, uh, and definitely for helping out. Were you able to sort out anything for Christmas dinner for, for Dawn? I saw you trying to ring up the local, local church, the wasn't local it? local church, yeah. We're still waiting to hear back from them. But hopefully we'll get a room for Christmas dinner today. Fingers crossed. Yep. Well, Katie, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Have a lovely, lovely Christmas. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm here with uh, Mandy, who's come along to see what's going on today. Mandy, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Mandy, you, we've been chatting uh, and you've already mentioned that you yourself were homeless for a year, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. 
Uh, not now, though. You've you, you managed to managed to turn things around. Is that right? Yeah, I managed to. Um, I ended up getting into one of the local hostels, um, and from there I managed to get a flat, and I've been stable now for nearly six years. Well, congratulations. That's you know, obviously quite an, quite an achievement. I mean, did you ever, when you were actually on the streets, though, did you ever see yourself getting off? Was it ever a, a possibility? No. Uh, up until now, the hostel system in this city was was a very good system because it was a, a self-appointed system. You could go and knock the door yourself, and they, if they had a bed, they would let you in. But now it's all changed over. The council have totally changed the whole the, the whole ball game. You've got to be assessed now before you can go into a hostel and before they move you on. You can't just go and knock on the door anymore. It, you have to go through the street homeless protection team, and and then they deal with it from there. Do you feel that this is a, a problem that's going to get worse around Southampton? Do you think we're going to see a rise? I mean, apparently there's, there's been a big rise nationally uh, of, of homeless people due to a lot of government cuts in the welfare system and, and capping on, on housing benefit. Do you think we're going to see a bigger increase in the local area around Southampton and, and Hampshire? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Because the government, what they intend to do is from April next year, they intend to take housing benefit where you used to be able to pay it direct to your landlord through Southampton City Council, now they intend taking it out of the out of the landlord's hands, putting it in your hands. So it's down to you now to pay to make sure you pay your own rent. And I see people that have got drink and drug problems that have managed to get off the streets, have managed to get themselves into a, a home just. If they've got like five, six hundred pound rent paid into their bank, it's not going to go to the landlord. It's definitely not going to go to the landlord, and it's it's going to make the situation. I I think you're going to start seeing tents in parks like this. That's, that's how I envisage how bad the, the system's going to get. They're cutting crisis loans, they're cutting community care grants, they're cutting council tax. Um, anybody of, who's even on benefit of, of work and age has got to pay 25% of their own council tax. I mean, some people that have just come off the streets have got a job to, to even can think about what paying a bill's like. As from April of next year, it's going to just get worse in Southampton. I like to say, it's ri risen nationally. I didn't know that. 43% according to crisis, 43% rise, but I mean, it's inspirational to talk to someone like yourself who has turned things around, uh, like James who's, who organised this, he himself was, was homeless and he managed to turn things around, uh, and I think it's a great message of hope, particularly at Christmas time. I mean, what's your personal feeling about the people that give up their time to do, to do things like this? I think it's absolutely brilliant, you know, to, 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 especially Christmas Day, when it's a family day, you want to spend it with family, especially if you've got kids, you want to be with kids, but if you want to come out and just even help one person, then you, you've had a good day, I think. So what's, what's, the, what's happening for the rest of the day for you now? I mean, you're out here in, in, in Hogland's Park with us here. It stopped raining, fortunately. The sun's come out, you know, we're having a cup of coffee. Uh, but what's, what's next for you after this? Me, I'm just going to go back, uh, take the dog for a little bit more of a walk, um, go back home, cook a bit of dinner, because I live on my own, um, cook a bit of dinner and spend the rest of the day in my jammies. <laughs> Sounds like a perfect Christmas. Thank you very much for chatting to us. James isn't just about doing things at Christmas time, he's also got lots of plans, he's got lots of suggestions that he's trying to sell to the council and one of them is to turn uh, public toilets like this into shower facilities for people who are sleeping rough around Southampton. Taking something like this, an old beaten up toilet which is just now a subject for graffiti and making it something useful a chance for people to go and keep clean and, and keep warm and particularly over the winter months when it gets so dark and cold and wet with snow and ice forecast and for much of January and February a plan like this would be so so important for the local people and Mandy who we were chatting to earlier mentioned to me as well and, and James has, has, has actually said this is true and I'm absolutely I can't believe this but apparently the way the government counts homeless people, they'll only count someone as homeless if they're laying down when they do the count. So if someone's standing up, quite obviously without, without their, you know, without anything, they're there, you know, just, with just their, their, their holders in a, in a bag, in a rucksack, they don't get counted as being one of the homeless population of Great Britain. It's only if they're laying down at the time of counting that they get counted, which is absolutely ridiculous. Therefore, these figures that the government give are completely out the window. And in fact, the problem is far worse than we're led to believe.